Hello everyone, today's video is about blastocystis hominis and also about biofilms. Before jumping into the video, if you don't mind taking a quick moment to please like, share, subscribe, and or post a quick comment on the video, I'd really appreciate it. So thanks in advance for taking a second to do that. And as per usual, nothing I'm saying should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only. If you need medical advice, please talk to your healthcare provider to get that advice. So there were a few questions that were posted recently, a couple about biofilms and one about blastocystis hominis. So we'll jump into the, with the blasto first and go from there. So about a week and a half ago, I posted a video called blastocystis hominis, many questions answered. Uh, for folks who are not familiar, um, Blastocystis hominis is a, a parasite. It's a protozoa, so a single-celled parasite, not a long wiggly wormy thing that you can see macroscopically, but uh, just a single-celled um, organism. <clears throat> and uh, some folks um, have symptoms related to that type of parasite. Um, so the question is, uh, tested positive for blasto. I have IBS symptoms and was wondering if you have used oregano and Saccharomyces boulardii with pre and, po uh, pre and probiotic to be successful at eliminating this parasite. So thank you for the question. Um, <clears throat> so in, with my patients, I... Uh, if I have a patient and I, I think that parasites are what are driving their symptoms, whether it's uh, blastocystis, hominis, or something else, um, I would generally, uh, the approach that I generally take, which I think I kind of went into in the, um, maybe went into it in this video, I don't remember, I post so many videos, I can't remember where I post what, but um, I would generally work with a combination of herbs, um, generally some pretty strong antiparasitics like um, black walnut um, extract, wormwood extract, uh, grapefruit seed extract are kind of my favorites. Um, I've talked in some other videos before about this combination formula that is put together by a company called Signature Supplements. Uh, they're based out of um, Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, um, close to where my clinic is, and uh, it's just equal parts of those herbs, and I find that that can be a very effective combo to go after parasites of you know, various shapes and sizes. Um, unfortunately, I can't talk about dosing specifically over social media, because that would be construed as medical advice, um, so I, I can't get into dosing, but generally um, I dose on the fairly high end of the spectrum when I'm going after parasites, and I virtually always recommend to my patients combining those types of anti-parasitic herbs with um, mimosa, <clears throat> mimosa pudica, uh, which several different companies make that. Uh, Cellcore is a well-known one. Uh, we generally order ours from Supreme Nutrition. Uh, I think there's a couple of other um, companies. I think Biopure uh, might make, make a mimosa pudica product. Uh, not many companies sell it, but it's a very, very valuable herb in my experience when it comes to treating parasites. Um, as far as, you know, Saccharomyces boulardii and pre and postbiotics, um, I haven't really seen a whole lot of effect with those to treat parasites in my experience. Um, I think for aftercare, you know, probiotics can be helpful. I think Saccharomyces boulardii is a great, um, you know, it's a yeast, but I mean, it's kind of lumped into the probiotic category in a way. I think it's a really great um, agent to use. And for certain conditions like, say, C. difficile, um, man, oh man, just nothing can, well, maybe not nothing compares to that, but it's a very important adjunct in, in that type of treatment. For blastocystis, not so much. Uh, the, no, I, should, I should say, I don't have any experience using it in that regard, and I'm not aware of it being fantastic against blastocystis hominis. Um, I use Saccharomyces boulardii usually more with um, yeast or, or the occasional case of C. diff that I might see in my practice. Um, oregano certainly has antiparasitic properties to it. Um, it's just not kind of one of my go-tos. Um, it can also be a bit challenging to dose something like oregano high enough because of the essential oil content. It can be a bit hard on the stomach um, or intestines sometimes for some people, but it, it, I think it would have an anti blastocystis hominis um, activity, uh, just not something that's kind of part of my standard protocol. Um, so yeah, so thank you for the question. I hope that information was useful. Just gonna switch screens here. So um, this, these were a couple of questions posted on a video that I posted 11 months ago um, called treat uh, phase one or phase two biofilms first. So I uh, posted quite a few videos about biofilms. Uh, punchline is that phase one biofilms are quite easy to break down. Phase two biofilms are much more tenacious to break down and different biofilm disrupting agents work on different types of biofilms. So uh, just making sure we know what we're, you know, uh, we have a sense of what we're treating, so to speak. Um, it's good to know which agents are going to be the most effective. So that's likely what that video was about to some extent. Or I guess which ones do you treat first? Anyways, um, again, I don't remember. The video is 11 months old, so not not sure what's uh, what's in there, but I'm sure I'm sure it's a good one. I hope. Um, so the question is: Thank you for this video. Um, do you do antibiotics slash antimicrobials at the same time as the phase two biofilm disruptors, or what is the preferred order of supplements to finally break up SIBO? So thank you for the question. Um, so in my practice, 
Um, I absolutely use antimicrobials at the same time as using phase two biofilm disruptors. Um, my rationale is that if we're breaking down the hiding places of the microbes, then eventually they're gonna come out of hiding and we wanna clobber them with those antimicrobials when they come out of hiding. Um, I know that there are some clinicians out there who will recommend that patients go on a biofilm disruptor for you know a few days or a week or a couple of weeks, um, kind of like get everything out to the open and then start killing off um, those microbes. Um, honestly, I don't think I've had a patient who has worked with a clinician who's used that approach, so I haven't been able to find out kind of through um, you know, third-hand information whether or not the uh, you know how the, well that was tolerated. I mean, when I think about it on paper, I think to myself, man, oh man, if I wanted to really flare somebody up, I'd put them on a biofilm disruptor for a while without any antimicrobial support. Um, but I, I know that is a pro an approach that's used, and, and it might be a really good approach. I don't personally see how it would be any advantage to use that approach over using antimicrobials at the same time. Um, I mean, one could make the argument that maybe you want to minimize your use of antimicrobials um, unless you're ready to like kind of kill off everything all at once because you don't want the microbes to build up resistance. But to my understanding in the world of you know, natural like uh, uh, non-pharmaceutical antimicrobials, especially herbal antimicrobials, um, my understanding is it's very, very challenging for microbes to become resistant to those. Whereas if maybe if we were using some other type of like an antibiotic, for example, maybe it would be more appropriate or, or make, make more sense, I should say, to do the biofilm disruptors first and then follow up with the antibiotic. But um, Anyways, that's just not something that I uh, use in practice, so I, I, I don't know. Um, so I, I do them at the same time. Um, and let's see here. And then uh, what is the preferred order of supplements to finally break up SIBO? So I'm, I'm assuming that means more like break up the biofilms that are maybe housing SIBO bacteria, or, you know, resolving SIBO with or there's, you know, if there's biofilms afoot as well. So what I usually recommend for my patients is starting with an anti-SIBO diet um, because we don't want to be feeding the microbes that we're trying to kill off. It's kind of counterproductive to do that. Um, I generally gradually build up their dosage of an anti-SIBO herbal protocol. I mean, some patients here in Nova Scotia naturopathic doctors like myself, unfortunately, don't have access to prescription pharmaceuticals. Um, so we can't get you know, rifaximin. Like it's quite challenging for patients to access rifaximin or other antibiotics here where I practice, where most of my patients reside. I certainly have patients from other places in the world uh, where they're able to access rifaximin and some patients here as well. But most of my experience is using um, herbs to go after SIBO. So generally I ask them to gradually phase up their dose of a dose of herbs or whatever you know, products we're using to help kill off the SIBO. <clears throat> and then if the patient hits a plateau um, or if they're do all you know doing really well, but then as they start to wean off the herbs, they start to feel worse again. Both of those can be clues that there might be biofilms afoot. Then I'll recommend that they stay on their herbal um, antimicrobial herbal protocol, but then start gradually phasing in a um, phase two biofilm disruptor, um, and then you know have them on that full protocol for you know anywhere from you know one to three months, sometimes longer in rare cases, um, to you know get rid of those biofilms. And then typically in those cases, once the biofilm disruption is um, uh, complete, then they're able to phase off the antimicrobials and they're they're good to go, or they get over the plateau, whatever the the case might have been. So that's the uh, that's the preferred order for my practice at least. Um, <clears throat> there's one other, so thank you for that, again, for that question. I hope that was useful information. Um, there was one other question that was actually posted 11 months ago. I feel bad that I didn't uh, see that one. It somehow got past my radar, but I'll just I'll answer it now. Um, so it says, um, let's see here. Do you cycle phase two biofilm disruptors on your patients like four days on, three days off? Do I find that if I do that, does it reap better results? Um, I don't do that. Um, I know some clinicians do, and um, I think it's a it's an okay approach to use, and especially if someone was having trouble tolerating the biofilm disruptor, then by golly, like yes, I would, you know, maybe do something like that. Or usually, I'll just ask them to reduce the dose instead of doing a full capsule every night. It would be maybe half a capsule every night or something like that. <clears throat> um, but I generally don't cycle. Um, uh, around biofilm disruptors for, for any other, like it's not my, a standard protocol that I would use. Um, I mean, it would be, again, not wrong to do that, but just where I kind of look at biofilms as being this, basically this you know, hiding place, this fortress that the microbes are hiding out behind. We just want to methodically, you know, break it down, break it down. So we're kind of metaphorically taking a sledgehammer to that fortress. And, you know, it's like, why would we give them three days off? Why not just keep hammering away as long as we're not chasing them out of hiding too quickly? So uh, thank you for all those questions. Hope this information was of use. If anybody has any questions on these topics or anything else, just post in the comment section below. And I will do my best to answer as soon as I can.